Hey everybody, it's Jason and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a follow-up to my previous charcoal making video. The goal here is to produce some large lump charcoal for a buddy of mine that has uh, kind of gotten into smoking briskets. He wants the chunks as big as possible so that he doesn't have to disturb the process as often. Uh, some of these smokes can go up to, you know, 10, 12 hours and, and even longer. So uh, he's very uh, disappointed with what he's found uh, in the commercial world, so I'm going to try to make him a better product. The white oak charcoal that I produced in my first run actually performed fairly well. It uh, burned very cleanly and it did, uh, in fact, last a, a good while. The problem was it was extremely fragile. So what we're going to do today is just change a few things and see if we can't get a, uh, a harder, more durable uh, charcoal that will uh, stick together just a little bit better. This time around, we're going to use some branches from a sugar maple that was felled back about four or five months ago. I chose a bunch of branches, sort of three to five inches in diameter, and cut them into 12 inch lengths before putting them beside the fireplace in my shop to dry for a month. I also came across a dead hickory branch, but I'm pretty sure that it's uh, too, too decayed to make uh, decent charcoal from. I might try it anyway, though. I think one of the problems I had in my uh, first run was that the uh, the actual wood was just too wet. There was a lot of steam coming out. So I want to make sure this stuff's good and dry. So here's the plan for today's burn. Uh, I want to get a good hot fire going as fast as I can. In the first test I measured temperatures of uh, 700 degrees Fahrenheit on the side of the outer barrel. So I'm going to use that as my target. Once I get there I will put the chimney on and bake the maple in the kiln for two full hours. Then I'll let it sit overnight and open it up in the morning. That's quite a bit shorter than the last time, so hopefully I'll see a difference. Then I'll do a third run in the next week or so with modifications based on the product I get from this batch, and I'll just keep doing that, dialing it in until I'm satisfied with what I get. I think I'll figure it out in a couple more runs. Top of the barrel, about 600 degrees. It's Fahrenheit, the bottom of the barrel. 760 degrees. That's pretty hot. All right, this is at the one hour mark and burning nice and clean, kind of jetting out of there just like it's supposed to. So I'm thinking that these volatiles are starting to burn off right now. Alright, we're at an hour and a half. Looks like it's burned down just a little bit, although the temperature is still 700 degrees. That's ah, like 500 at the top, 480. But still, that's hot. So I'm going to take the top off, and uh, I've got uh, a load of hardwood uh, cutoffs from the sawmill. I'm going to pack her up with that. This stuff's a little wet, so it's going to steam for just a while, but it'll uh, it'll clear up. It took about uh, 10 minutes last time to clear up. So, uh, and then it should burn hot, hot, hot. Yeah, there's that steam burning off. That shouldn't last all that long. Um, we knew it was coming. At 700 degrees, I can't imagine that water's gonna last all that long. 900, 993, I was over a thousand just a couple of minutes ago or seconds ago. High, 1080 high, so it's over its maximum reading, which is, I don't know what it is. So over a thousand degrees, that's nuts. But at the top here, 
Oh yeah, we're still 7, 7.20, 7.29. I've got about 15 minutes to go. I wonder if I should top it up or if I should just leave it. It's burning differently. It's not, uh, it's not really blowing out like it was before. So I wonder if it's done, it's, uh, oh, stuff's happening there. I wonder if uh, it's done its, uh, its thing, burning off those volatiles. Hmm. Okay, with 15 minutes to go, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up the top here and I'll bet you that there's a bunch of hardwood still on the top that just needs to get shaken down to the side. I don't think I'm gonna add anything more, but I'm gonna just take a look and uh, maybe just take a stick and just push everything down to the side so it just keeps burning, and then I'll, I'll call it a day. So I'll just take a stick and uh, poke it down to the sides a little bit and that'll be good enough. Look at that. That's Brother, that's hot. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised at how little uh, fuel wood I burnt this time too, probably because it was relatively dry. So I went through, I would say, a wheelbarrow of, um, of these hardwood kind of chunks. They're a little wet, but you know, more or less good foot fuel wood. And I didn't go through very much of that twigs at all, just to get it started and sort of feed it for the little beginning there. And then a handful of uh, construction cutoffs. So yeah, this is a much better experience than the last time. Uh, I think it's a better burn, use less fuel, less steam, a lot faster. So here we are two hours, still really hot down there, thousand degrees. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not gonna touch a thing gonna leave the uh, chimney on and just let it burn out and check it in the morning. All right, see what we got going on here. Lots of little stuff. Yeah. Still warm. <laughs> good charcoal but it's it wants big lumps and these are not big lumps they're falling apart now does that mean I'm cooking it for too long I wonder if we're done all the way through no doubt about that yep definitely done all the way through that's a nice solid piece hmm we'll figure this out still hot in there. Okay, you can't hear it on the camera probably, oh, that's hot. But this is starting to like crackle like a barbecue. 
and it's hot. There's a lot of heat coming out of here, so I'm afraid it's going to start to uh, and reignite. Um, so I'm going to seal it back up. Probably let it sit until uh, let it sit until tomorrow. Go real early here. All right. Well, I've got it set back upright. Hopefully, uh, like it's there's no opening in the top, so if it does smolder a little bit. It'll eventually burn up all the oxygen in there and it should turn into some kind of a non-combustible um, non environment. I'll let that cool for another night because it's it's really hot in the inside, like starting to smoke and I think it's gonna reignite soon if I'm not careful now that it's getting all this oxygen. So I got a little bit out, a little bit disappointed. Uh, I was hoping for bigger chunks and I was hoping it would stick together a little bit harder. Gonna have to do a little bit of thinking on this, maybe a little bit of reading. See what I can find out. But I mean, overall, at least it's done. And I'm still kind of wondering if it's not done too much. And then the next thing I'm wondering is, maybe I shouldn't let it sit for 16 hours after it finishes on the fire. Maybe I should pull that thing off as soon as I can and let this start cooling down ASAP. Again, I have to do a little bit of a uh, research, but I'll figure it out. All right, so it's, uh, about six hours after I opened it to uh, to empty it this morning. It's uh, the afternoon now. And I just came out to check on it. And this thing is actually getting hotter as the day goes on. So it's 120 at the top. On this side at the bottom, it's 332 degrees. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's obviously, it's getting air in there and, uh, and, and burning up. Uh, oh, well. That's what happens. I bet you I'm just left with a big pile of ashes in here in the next day or so. Unless the ashes come down and seal up the crack and uh, who knows. Anyway, this uh, this charcoal is, uh, is it was too fine anyway for me. Like it breaks up into too, too small a pieces. So I don't really care if I lose this, but now I'm kind of curious to see what happens to it. All right, I'll keep you filled in. All right, so it's four full days after I started the, uh, the burn, three full days after I expected to uh, to empty it so i think what's happened here is this thing stayed hot for way 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 too long and i'm sure it's because it's not making a good seal here at the bottom but you can see that the heat has actually distorted the metal on the base so look at that big crack and then uh, you can't really see it but underneath here there's an equivalent big crack and it's just not seating very well so i'm gonna have to improve on that but i just don't think that is the problem with my uh with my fragile charcoal, shall we call it. So uh, anyway, let's let's crack this open, see if we have anything left. Um, I'm sure it's just been smoldering away for a few days and maybe I got a pile of dust in there, I don't know. Believe it or not, there's still some residual heat here. <laughs> so I, you know, I, a little bit of improvement coming, I promise. Yeah, these are still warm. So I think what I'm gonna do for the warm ones, I'm just gonna put them in that metal can there. This is the stuff from the top of the kiln, so oxygen probably hasn't gotten to it. This is the stuff at the bottom. You can see all the dust. So a lot of that charcoal has turned to dust. And uh, here's the stuff that I got uh, the other day, plus a few little chunks from this morning. So not a total fail, but certainly not what I was hoping for. So I'm going to have to make some modifications. I'm going to have to do a little bit of reading, a little bit of thinking. But for sure, I'm going to have to improve the seal I get on the bottom of this uh, kiln. And I think I'm just going to maybe adjust the time that I cook it for. But uh, you have to uh, hang in there for the next video and uh, we'll find out then what I decide. Uh, until then, thank you very much for watching. They're not all successes, but uh, they are definitely learning experiences. Take care. <laughs> and here's an hour later. So uh, <laughs> apparently they still were a little bit... Uh, warm that used to be in a plastic container you might recall 
Ah, well, live and learn. Catch you later.